what is the goal of a CV? Usually when I ask the question, uh, I actually hear the answer, the goal of the CV is to get a job, um, which none of you said, maybe some thought. Um, the goal of the CV is to get an interview, not a job. And it's like um, in a video game where you unlock certain levels. So if you have a good subject line in an email address, um, the recipient clicks on the email or decides to delete it. If the cover email is then well written, somebody will click on the CV or delete it. The goal of the CV is to get, in, uh, get a screening call or um, be deleted. Um, after the screening call, interview or delete. First round of interview, the goal is to get a second interview. Um, the second interview would then see offer, maybe sometimes it, uh, it leads to more rounds, but you get the idea. So when looking at uh, job search and an application process, we look really at every single element that influences the decision whether to click on the email or delete, read it or delete. CV or delete, etc. Um, the rules when talking about CVs, it is, should be, has to be, must be written for the audience in mind. In other words, if you realize when doing the first module that there are two different career paths for you or two different industries or two different roles, you would have two different target audience, meaning you would need two different CVs. It should not have any mistakes, and you will see why soon. One reason is the human that reads the CV that could not be very mistake resistant. There are perfectionists, or there are actually also recruiters who say, if I receive a bad CV with spelling mistakes, bad CVs means bad candidates. And this could be a subjective human impression, but then when we look at applicant tracking systems and uh, machines that scan the documents, a machine doesn't understand spelling mistakes. So if you have misspelled a keyword, you will not be flagged or tagged as a potentially good candidate. So no mistakes for the human as a subjective quality kind of perspective, but there's zero tolerance for ATS when it comes to mistakes. What's also important to remember that part of the interview already happens on the screen. With more and more qualified candidates, um, imagine that you are a recruiter, you posted a job at on LinkedIn, and you have four, five, six hundred candidates, out of which 50 have sent their CV that has no mistakes, well prepared, out of which 25 present the most important information right there and then, which means I have 20 easy candidates where I already have all the information in front of me, and with the other 30, I actually have to start calling them. Yes, it's the job of a recruiter to do that, but recruiters very often work on 10, 15, 20 recruitment processes at the same time. They are paid upon success, so they will go with the easy candidates. And with that in mind, part of the interview happens already on the screen. So how you prepare um, the CV is important. Now, as I said, we do collect a lot of data. Um, one of them is the efficiency of the job hunting channels. Um, there are four channels that you can use to create job offers or at least interviews and interest on a job market. One is speculative introduction, meaning contacting your potential boss directly. Uh, networking, executive search firms, and job ads. Now, um, I want to do this interactively with you. If you decide to contact your potential boss directly, do you need a CV that is prepared for human or applicant tracking system software. Okay, this is pretty clear human potential boss. What about networking?
that's also pretty clear. Networking human is a source of information, can introduce you, etc. When it comes to executive search firms or in general recruitment companies, what kind of CV do you need here, human or ATS? Okay, we have one that says human. Okay, anybody here has been asked to upload your CV to a database in the last weeks or even years? Yes, database means potential for software. So with the recruitment companies, we need actually both. We need human, unless you're specifically asked to upload it to a database, then you also need an ATS version of your CV. Um, and job ads, um, we have both. And I'll show you today how to recognize if there is a software behind it, what kind of software, and how to optimize for that. Um, I speak a lot about recruiters, um, and their job is really not an easy one. Recruiters do receive approximately 50, on an average day, 50 unsolicited, unsolicited CVs per day, meaning they receive CVs they have not asked for themselves. So those are proactive candidates. That's 250 CVs per week, 1,000 CVs per month, 12,000 CVs per year. That is a lot of CVs for one human being. Um, on top of that, they do have five to 15, sometimes 20 ongoing parallel recruitment projects and KPIs. Um, there are recruitment companies that are managed by KPIs, meaning that the Recruitment consultants have five business development calls to do, um, two client meetings, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very high pressure environment. So grasping their attention is important. And nowadays, because of COVID-19, they're obviously flooded with CVs. Hi, you have just watched a little fragment of all the know-how at Career Angels that goes into finding the best possible job. We have decided to put our know-how into one very thorough and structured course that is now available on Udemy. In that course, we will walk you through all four steps of the job hunting process. Step number one is about goal setting, realistic goal setting. We will explain career management theory backed by research, as well as walk you through the parameter bidding exercise. Step number two is about your unique selling proposition. In other words, how you position yourself on the current job market. Step number three is about communicating that in your CV, your CV for applicant tracking systems, and your optimized LinkedIn profile. Step number four, the last step, is about managing and navigating the job hunting channels, meaning how to network, how to apply to job ads, how to contact headhunters, and how to contact and reach out to decision makers at the companies you would like to work for. So in summary, the course is very thorough, explains all our methodology and is now available on Udemy. Summarizing, our course on Udemy walks you through the four steps of the job search process. Why did we decide to publish it? We did that so that your own job search becomes less frustrating, faster and more effective. If you'd like to check it out, find the link down there in the description.